so this is kind of a huge homeschool update <laughs> I have gone from homeschooling four children to homeschooling six in today's video we're gonna talk about three things that I've learned throughout this process that honestly can really help someone who may be considering doing the same thing but before we jump into that how did I get here well that's kind of a long story but I guess the short version is I moved from Florida to Kansas and I live right next to my best friend Katie from life in the mundane who has six kiddos herself and we have just grown so close our kids are best friends we're best friends we hang out almost every single day so that's just the back end of that on the other side my plan this year was to homeschool three of my children my fourth just turned four years old in october so my plan with her was to do a very light pre-k teaching her her letter sounds mild phonics curriculum nothing too crazy i soon realized that my plan for her was not going to be her plan for her her learning and growth has gone so much further than what i had planned for now i have never taught two children how to read at the same time because all my children are perfectly spaced three years apart but my daughter and my son are two years apart but either way she's she's barely four years old and so my thought process was there's no way she would even be ready to be reading and so we're just gonna have a very laid-back year her thought process was no mom we're gonna read and without me teaching her formally she has begun to teach herself how to read she's reading her brother's sight word cards from let me show you so we have these like cards from Christian light education and I caught her one day just reading the cards I post I posted about it on my Instagram stories but just reading the cards and I mean really good job even the sight word ones where you have to know from sight she's been reading them and she does sit in on lessons with her brother but she doesn't she doesn't seem like she's paying attention turns out she was paying attention but with teaching yourself there are obvious gaps or things that you miss that is not quite right if that makes sense and so I knew from when I saw that she had done this <laughs> that she was going to need to be formally taught how to read and to be honest y'all I was not very excited about this because I learned teaching kids how to read to me is very hard it's not one of the easiest things for me to, to do is to teach them how to read and so having more than one child to teach how to read is not my idea of a good time and so as I complained to my friends and struggled with this and took it to God in prayer I clearly heard God telling me I need to do like a one room schoolhouse type of feel and I needed to invite Katie's two youngest children and teach them how to read as well. And I'm like, God, see what had happened was you don't understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying was I don't want to teach two kids how to read. How is teaching four kids how to read going to help? But as the Lord reminded me or convicted me, for lack of a better word, the reason why I am productive, the reason why I believe in being a good steward of your time is so that you can glorify God. It's so that you have the opportunity to be instrument in the Redeemer's hands so that's why I do it 
That's why I try to be a good steward of my time. That's why I try to navigate through life with intention and purpose. And that's why I teach what I teach is because I believe that being peaceful presence can be found when you are a good steward of your time. And so God was like, this is your opportunity to be an instrument in the Redeemer's hands. And so reaching out to my friend, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I think I'm supposed to be doing this. Pray about it because it don't make much sense to me. <laughs> but pray about it and let me know what you think. So one of the things that really came to light in this whole process of beginning to homeschool Katie's children was that we don't use the same curriculum. She was using IEW PALS with her kiddos and I am doing Christian Light Education. And so I thought to myself, okay, you know, she's already having to do so much and this is a huge thing for her to give up for me to homeschool her kiddos. And so I didn't want to ask her to do too much. I was like, let me find a way to see how I can mix and match these two curriculums and create my own curriculum. It's really hard to try to mush two full homeschooling curriculums together. So I went to her and I was like, hey, so how like, committed or addicted or like how like much do you really want to continue using pals if you do don't stress i will figure it out you know all the things she was like look i don't care what curriculum you use do whatever i will i will i will get you all the books that you need for them i will do whatever homework you assign i am not like so, I don't know, not committed, but I'm not so like stuck that I have to use one curriculum. And so I think that's really vital is like picking out curriculum and having that conversation and being open with open communication because a lot of times when you're trying to help somebody out or you're trying to do something like this, you wanna be helpful, you don't want to just come and take over, if that makes sense. You can't assume what the other person is thinking. You don't know what they're thinking, what's going on through their mind. So open communication is vital when it comes to homeschooling somebody else's child. The next thing is, initially I was like, I will homeschool them five days a week, nine to 12. I will have them between that time do all the math reading, writing type things with them. Then I remember we got co-op every Friday. We have co-op every single Friday. Plus homeschooling them five days a week really doesn't allow me any teacher planning time. You know what I mean? Or any time to really assess how the kiddos have been doing and figure out what's working and what's not working. And so I went back to her and I was like, Okay, so we got co-op on Friday. <laughs> it, how about I homeschool them nine to 12, four days a week? And she was like, yeah, that's perfect, that's fine. Because on Fridays, she's moving and shaking and she's all over the place. And so it's hard for her to pick them up by a certain time or drop them off by a certain time because she's not even home at that time. And so I say all that to say, establishing a schedule that works for you you don't have to homeschool from nine to three. You don't have to take on the full load. Sometimes just a couple of hours can really help a homeschool mom. And so in addition to that, it might not even be a couple of hours. You might just outsource one subject. Katie was telling me that when she was younger, her mom would homeschool a neighbor's child for one subject. I want to say it was history or writing and the neighbor's mother would homeschool Katie in Spanish. And so they kind of like swap subjects with the neighbor. You don't necessarily have to even take children every single day 
for a certain amount of hours. It can just be one subject or one thing. So you can be very creative and open and flexible with the schedule and making sure that what you do works for you and your family and your home and still help. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be coming out with a video really breaking down the 9 to 12 schedule that I've established for us and it's amazing. It's the perfect kindergarten first grade schedule and so I'm going to be breaking that down in a video coming out on Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video when it comes out. What I discovered in the first week of homeschooling these kiddos is that I didn't know what I was getting into until I got into it. Thankfully, I am Plan Prep Pray, and I know that you're not really gonna know what you know until you're in there. You know what I mean? You're not gonna know what you're missing, you're not gonna know what's working, you're not gonna know what's not working until you actually do it. And so I had a running list going on on my board that every single day for the first week where I was jotting down notes, I was like, they need a water bottle, we need a treasure box, stickers, we need to start with this, we need to start with that, da -da -da, this, that, and the other. Like I had a running list going that I can go back to, because in the moment, it was, I just had to make it work, but I can go back to on Saturday or Sunday and just make sure that I'm able to hit all those points. The other thing is communicating this list with Katie helped so much. I was able to be like, hey, Katie, the girls need water bottles. I've realized they get thirsty a lot, <laughs> which I knew with my kids, but I just didn't even think about it. Like kids are always thirsty and it's always an excuse to run upstairs and get water. So I'm like, I need a water bottle down here. I initially brought a pitcher of water downstairs and just refilled their cups and quickly learned that's not a good idea because we spilling water all over the table. Anyways, not the point. The point is they need water bottles. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sure. I'll get them school water bottles that they can keep at your house. And it's like, it's all that to say, like just the communication, the, be, the ability to be flexible and adjust and all the things, it's just, yes, it's, much needed. Now, if you want to hear Katie's side of this story, where she was at when she decided to allow me the wonderful benefit of homeschooling her beautiful kiddos, click this link right here and hear her story. It's a good one.